This video covers the SVG group element. The structure of this video is as follows. SVG group element. SVG group element transform. SVG coordinate space transformation. And the summary. All right, let's get started. SVG group element. The SVG group element is used to group SVG elements together. You can think of the SVG group as a container. The G tag is the SVG group element. Anything inside of the G tag is considered to be inside slash part of the G container. There are two main reasons to use the SVG group element. One, grouping a set of SVG elements with the same attributes. Two, to define a new coordinate system for the set of SVG elements by applying a transformation to each coordinate specified in this set of SVG elements. When you use a group element, it can be for one reason or the other or both. You can also group elements within other group elements. Any transformation applied to the SVG group element is applied to all of the child elements contained inside. One way to organize a visualization is by grouping elements together that have the same attributes. In this case, the circle SVG elements are grouped together and the rectangle SVG elements are grouped together. This helps to keep things in order and makes it easy to understand when you are building a visualization. Once elements are grouped together, you can apply attributes and values to the G element. These attributes and values then filter down to the rest of the elements contained in the G element. In this case, both SVG circle elements will have a fill of purple. This is useful when defining the look and feel in CSS because we can apply an HTML class and or HTML ID to a group element which is then applied to all contained SVG elements. SVG group element transform. The other thing you can do to a group element is to apply a set of transformations. This transformation will transfer every element inside of the G group. The transformation does not affect elements outside of the specific G group to which the transformation was applied to. This will become important later. The transformations are based on linear algebra. You can think of transformations as being able to do the following. Moving the group elements up, down, left, right, or a combination. Being able to skew the elements along the x-axis. Being able to skew the elements along the y-axis. Being able to scale up or scale down the size of elements. Being able to rotate the elements or do a combination of some or all of the things. You can even nest transformations inside of other transformations. The easiest transformation to understand is the translate. This transformation moves all of the elements inside of the G element a certain number of units X and a certain number of units Y. In this simple example, we have an SVG circle whose center point is at 50, 50 and has a radius of 20. It is inside of an SVG group element. The SVG group element has a transformation applied to it. This transformation is a translation. The first number in the translation is 20. This tells the G element to add 20 units to the X coordinate of all the elements inside of the G element which in the case of this circle means add 20 units to the CX. This will move the circle to the right. In this simple example, we have an SVG circle whose center point is at 50, 50 and has a radius of 20. It is inside of an SVG group element. The SVG group element has a transformation applied to it. This transformation is a translation. The second number in the translation is negative 20. This tells the G element to subtract 20 units from the Y coordinate of all the elements inside, which in the case of this circle means subtract 20 units from the CY. This will move the circle up. It moves the circle up because the SVG coordinate space has the Y axis inverted. We can even apply both X and Y coordinate transformations at the same time which in the case of this circle means adding 20 units to the CX and means subtracting 20 units from the CY. It is worth noting that though the CX and CY of the circle are within the SVG viewport, it is possible to apply a transformation that will move the circle out of the SVG viewport, thus making the circle disappear. If we are going to transform the units of the data, why not just change the data to reflect the transformation we want? Two reasons. One, we want to keep the original data clean. Two, 
By specifying the transformation at the G level, we only have to do it once instead of doing it for every element. We can let the SVG specification worry about that. If we are not touching the data, what is really happening at a deeper level? SVG coordinate space transformation. At a deeper level, what the G element transform is doing is transforming the SVG coordinate space. The translate functionality can be thought of as moving the 0, 0 point of the blue coordinate system to a 0, 0 point in the purple coordinate system. So everything inside of the G element is now operating inside of the new purple coordinate system. For this next part, we use a service called JS Fiddle. JS Fiddle allows us to type in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS code in one screen and see the output immediately. We will come back to this service later as it also allows for the D3 library to be loaded inside of it. Back to the G element and the SVG coordinate space transformations. In this case, both circles have the same CX, CY, and radius. The first circle, with ID outside has a CX of 40 and a CY of 40. This means that we move from the origin 40 units to the right and 40 units down. We move down because the SVG coordinate space Y axis is inverted. The second circle with ID inside has a CX of 40 and a CY of 40. This means that we move from the origin 40 units to the right and 40 units down. We move down because the SVG coordinate space y-axis is inverted. The big difference in this picture is that the origin of the second circle is 10 units to the right and 10 units down from the origin of the first circle. The first circle is on the blue coordinate system while the second circle is on the purple coordinate system. Everything in the SVG tags is based off of the blue coordinate system, while everything in the G tags is based off of the purple coordinate system. In this example, the circles have different CX and CY points from each other. However, because the SVG group element has been transformed by a translation 10 units to the right and 10 units down, we can see that the circles are sitting exactly on top of each other. In fact, we can't even see the green circle. In this example, the circles have different CX and CY points from each other. However, because the SVG group element has been transformed by a translation negative 10 units to the right and negative 10 units down, we can see the circles sitting exactly on top of each other. The picture on the screen is a Mike Ostock block explaining the margin convention he uses in D3. Mike uses the translate transformations to move the graph to a new coordinate system. The G element transformation shows up in all kinds of places when using SVG and D3. In fact, of the 14 basic examples found on the d3js.org website, all 14 of them use the SVG group element and the SVG group element transform at least once. Some use it as many as three times in a single chart. The summary. This video covered SVG group element, SVG group element transform, SVG coordinate space transformation, and the summary.